I have no doubt that it would be enforced in the most punitive way possible against the gun owner. We are the Armed Attorneys. Today we're talking again about pistol arm braces, about the ATF's new rule, and what to do if you live in a state in which um, SBRs are illegal under state law, and even if you don't, how your state has probably mucked up um, any sort of good news for you in the front of your state's law is better than federal law. So before we get started, share your support for the second minute by hitting the like button. And Richard, what are we talking about today? We're talking about the road to hell and how it's paved with uh, good intentions. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a couple of things to this. We're talking about states that are outright, you know, banned NFA items. They fall in their own category. We kind of have this silly middle category that I think a lot of people are going to find themselves in. And that's what I would re really want to focus our discussion on about how state laws are tied to federal laws and all the kind of unintended consequences. And then, you know, maybe the, there are some sanctuary states, how that might play into it just how a little. How does that? Yes, exactly. But I think it starts with, and this is no surprise to me, we have found, you know, based on the new final rule and factoring criteria and stabilizing braces, um, that essentially the ATF is not going to be approving Form 1 applications for short barreled rifles in states where a short barreled rifle would be illegal under state law. They're saying you couldn't lawfully possess this under state law. We're not going to give you authorization. I don't think that's a huge surprise. I think it caught some people uh, flat footed. But Unfortunately. I, but I think that's a, you know, I think that's a correct interpretation of the law if there is if there's a way to say that. But I think what's important is we have all these states, including gun friendly states, state of Texas, where maybe we have just criminalized braced pistols under state law. Yes. And I will say, if you live in one of those states and you were thinking to yourself, how can my state do this after the New York State Pistol and Rifle Association versus Bruin decision? I would say to you, yes, that seems like something that should be challenged. And I would encourage you to contact Gun Owners of America, Second Amendment Foundation. There are lots of advocacy organizations that specialize, unlike Richard and I, who specialize in defending you if you're charged with murder for self-defense, they specialize in suing the government over um, unconstitutional gun laws. They collect plaintiffs, they pay for those lawyers, they are fantastic organizations, and these laws that we're talking about need to be challenged. Yeah, big time. And um, I, I won't bury the lead here. So what we have in Texas, and a lot of states have this, you got to look at your state's law with regard to prohibited weapons. We see kind of two different forms here. One will say, hey, you're allowed to have NFA items so long as you comply with federal law. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they come in two different forms. Like I said, one is, hey, we, you know, unless we have reason to believe that it's not registered, you know, you're going to be fine and dandy. That has one particular effect. And then the other category, whereas we presume that it's unlawful unless you prove that it's lawfully registered. So we have this one big group, NFA items tied to federal law um, under state law, kind of fall into those two big categories. But we're looking at Texas's prohibited weapon statute, Texas Penal Code 4605. And a lot of states have something like this. Uh -huh. um, and what kind of practical effect do you think this has? Well, what Texas does is say, it is illegal to possess a short barrel rifle unless it is registered with the federal government properly under the NFA. And so that puts us in a situation which is very strange because lots of people have gone through our comment section and have said things like, hey, what about Second Amendment sanctuaries? What if my state you know, is committed to not enforcing new unconstitutional gun laws? Well, very interesting, I say. But your state probably has a similar provision. I would say it is far more common than not for your state to have criminalized the possession of NFA items, but for those that are lawfully registered. So what we have is virtually all Second Amendment sanctuary state, city, county provisions say, um, you know, we won't assist the federal government in enforcing unconstitutional gun laws. So it doesn't mean the federal government can't come do it themselves. Right. They can still do that. But, and I'll tell you just specifically the state of Texas, which is a pretty good model, I and mean, most of them read fairly similarly, says this doesn't apply to anything that is also a state crime. And so if your state crime is possessing a short barrel rifle, that brings up a brand new question that we need to address and think about, which is, and I'll just, I guess I'll put it out there for Texas, Texas criminalizes the possession of SBRs if they are unregistered. The federal government has said an arm brace makes a pistol that was otherwise a pistol, an SBR, 
does Texas now follow the federal government's lead and say that braced pistol is in fact an SBR? We can enforce the state law and we could send you to the feds, too, if we wanted to enforce it because it's part of state law. Richard, what's the answer? Uh, I don't know. Put up the video of Zach Galifianakis with all the, you know, symbols and numbers all around his head. I mean, it's it's a complicated scenario because you have a sanctuary. If a sanctuary is enforcing its own law, Mm -hmm. this law is only triggered because it's tied to federal law. Mm -hmm. We come into a really, really bizarre place. And Mm -hmm. I think the solution to all this is take it off the books, Texas. Take it off the books. (laughs) Every state that has done this, you got to take it off the books because you are going to find that you have this problem as the federal government continues to do what they have decided to do, which is realize that they are stagnant in passing gun control because the will of the people and thus the will of the members of Congress is to not pass gun control. Um, And so they're just going to do it themselves through ATF regulation. I mean, we are going to find this more and more and more. So states need to be proactive. I'm looking at you, Texas, amongst others, by removing these items from your prohibited weapons list. But Practically speaking, is your state going to follow the federal government's lead in sort of changing its definition? The answer is it's going to vary widely throughout your state based on who the elected leaders are, what their politics are, what way the wind is blowing that day until higher courts, first in your state, then further out reaching, decide how it's supposed to be enforced, right? Yeah, but I, I do think that it's a scary proposition to say Texas is criminalizing the possession of braced pistols. Like yeah. that, you know, and I don't want to live in that world. But I'm sorry, Richard. Where do you live? Because <laughs> I, li- I live in a Harris County, Texas world in right. which what are, like, give me the odds on the Harris County elected prosecutor not going after braced pistols as SBRs. Yeah, that's got to be close to zero, I imagine. I mean, it. it, I have no doubt that it would be enforced in the most punitive way possible against the gun owner. So, I mean, that's and that's all to say. And I think this is a kind of the action item. If if anything, get involved on your state level. We got to uncouple these state laws from federal law because we see how these unintended consequences can have kind of a ripple effect. Uh, man, especially, I mean, just looking at the state of Texas, we shouldn't be criminalized. Nope. Divorce them. Pull them apart. <laughs> but we hope you enjoyed this discussion. If you did, consider subscribing, hitting that like button, and help us fight the anti-2A algorithm by sharing this video. And always question and comment for us below. Until next time, we're the Armed Attorneys.